Welcome to our deep dive on phrasal verbs. You know those articles you sent over on the 30 most common phrasal verbs in English? I gotta say, um, they turned out to be way more interesting than I thought they'd be. It's funny, right? Like realizing those comfy jeans you live in are suddenly high fashion. Exactly. Like who knew, get up, turn on, or even look after, we're all phrasal verbs. It's like they're hiding in plain sight. And the thing is, those little particles like up or on, they totally change the meaning of the verb. Like turn is so different from turn on or turn off. Yeah, it's like they have this secret power to transform the meaning. It's like adding a secret ingredient, you know? It completely changes the flavor. Okay, so the article kicks things off with everyday actions. You know, those things we do without even thinking like, get up. The example is, I get up at 7 a.m. every day for school. Pretty basic, right? But then you think about other ways to use it, like get up off the floor. Totally different vibe, right? Yeah, suddenly it's all about urgency. And that's what makes them so cool, right? Mm -hmm. They can shape shift depending on the situation. Okay, how about look after? The article uses the example, my aunt will look after my dog while we're on vacation. But I feel like look after has more to it than just watching over something. Yeah, it's not just about keeping an eye on something, is it? No, there's like a sense of responsibility there. Right, like you're entrusted with someone's well-being. It's deeper than just watching, right. right? You're actively involved in making sure things are okay. You're invested. You care about what happens. Okay, let's talk about give up. You know, that feeling of throwing in the towel. The article gives the example, I won't give up learning to play the guitar, even though it's difficult. But then there's also, I give up, I can't solve this puzzle. So both are about admitting defeat, but one has that element of, I don't know, determination. Yeah, like you're not giving up forever, just for now. Right. It's not total surrender. There's hope for the future. Okay, this next one is so relatable. Run out of, the article says, we ran out of milk, so we need to buy more. I feel like I'm always running out of something. Me too. Milk, coffee, time. It's a universal struggle. <laughs> it really is. It's like a constant reminder that we're always needing something. And that's what's cool about phrasal verbs. They capture these everyday experiences in such a concise way. Put on. Seems pretty basic, right? The article gives the example, don't forget to put on your jacket. It's cold outside. But I remember you were saying they can have these metaphorical meanings too. Right. It's not always about literally putting something on. You can put on a smile or a brave face, even a whole act. So it's like you're adopting a certain persona. Exactly. It's like you're putting on a costume. Okay. Take off shows up twice in this first part. Mm -hmm. First, we have, please take off your shoes before entering the house. Then there's, the plane will take off at 6 p.m., but we both know there's that other takeoff, meaning leaving in a hurry. Right? Yeah, like when you gotta make a quick getaway. We'll get to that one later. Definitely. But it's cool how takeoff can be about something as specific as removing your shoes or something as big as a plane leaving the ground. It's like it adapts to the situation. Speaking of adapting, how about breakdown. The article gives us, our car broke down on the way to the beach, and she broke down after hearing the sad news. Two totally different situations, but the same phrasal verb. Right. Both involve something ceasing to function, whether it's a car or someone's emotional state. And sometimes it's both. Like when your car breaks down and you just lose it on the side of the road. Oh, I've been there. Pick up is like a master of disguise. Yeah. The article has three examples. Can you pick up that book for me? I yeah. will pick you up after school. And she picked up a few Spanish phrases during her trip to Spain. It's like a Swiss army knife of phrasal verbs. Pick up is so versatile. It can be about grabbing something physically, picking someone up in a car, or even acquiring a new skill or language. Okay, last one for this part. Look forward to. The article gives the example, I'm really looking forward to the weekend. It's that feeling of anticipation, right? Totally. It's all about that positive excitement for something good that's coming your way. And it doesn't have to be something big, right? It could be something small, like just a quiet evening at home. It's about finding those little things that make you happy and anticipating them. So what are you looking forward to today? Hmm, that's a good question. I think I'm looking forward to. So ready to dive into part two. This set of phrasal verbs is all about like how we connect with other people and deal with those tricky situations life throws at us. Ooh, I like that. It's like the social survival kit of phrasal verbs. Well, exactly. And we're starting with the classic hangout, you know, just spending time with friends. The example is, I'm going to hang out with my friends after school. It seems simple, right? But I think there's something special about hangout. It's not specific. 
you don't have to be doing anything in particular. Yeah, it's just about being together, right? Yeah, like it captures that easygoing vibe of just enjoying each other's company. It's the linguistic equivalent of comfy sweatpants. I love that. Okay, how about find out? The article says, I need to find out what time the movie starts. But find out applies to so much more than just movie times. Right. It's about actively seeking information. Yeah. It's like you're on a mission to uncover the truth. Exactly. It's like being a detective. So it's more than just passively waiting for information to come to you. You're actively going after it. You're curious. You want to know what's going on. Speaking of figuring things out, take care of seems pretty self-explanatory. <laughs> the article gives us, can you take care of my plants while I'm away? But we know it goes beyond plants, right? Right. It's about taking responsibility for something or someone. Yeah, it's like you're making sure they're okay, that they're thriving. There's that sense of nurturing and care that goes beyond just managing or overseeing. Okay, I like that. So it's deeper than just looking after, right? Definitely. It's about actively tending to their needs. All right, let's move on to give back. There's something really positive about this phrasal verb. The article says, don't forget to give back the book you borrowed from the library. But I feel like give back has a much broader meaning, like contributing to the community. Right. It's about sharing and supporting others. Right? Yeah. And recognizing that we're all part of something bigger. Exactly. It's about recognizing that we don't exist in isolation. Come back seems simple at first. You know, like she will come back from her trip next week. Just stating a fact. But you were saying earlier that come back can have deeper meanings, too. Yeah, come back can be about more than just physical location. It can be about, like, memories resurfacing or things from the past reappearing. Like when you hear a song and you're suddenly transported back to a specific time and place. Exactly. It's a powerful feeling. It really is. Okay, next up we have Go On. The article gives us, please go on with your story. I want to hear what happened next. But Go On can be used in so many different ways. Yeah, it's about encouraging someone to continue, right? Whether it's a story, a task, whatever. It's like saying, keep going, I'm listening. Or don't stop now, you're almost there. I like that. Okay, turn off is pretty much the opposite of turn on, right? Like, can you turn off the lights when you leave the room? But I feel like turn off can also be about disconnecting from something. Yeah, like mentally checking out, right? Yeah, like turning off your phone or even turning off your emotions for a bit. Creating those boundaries, right? Exactly. Okay, set up is next. The article focuses on the literal meaning, like we need to set up the tent before it gets dark. Mm -hmm. But I remember you saying that set up can also be about preparing for something, like setting the stage for a particular outcome. Right, like you can set up a meeting or set someone up on a date. It's about making arrangements, putting things in motion. It suggests planning and foresight. Okay, takeout is another one that can really change depending on the context. The article gives us, please take out the trash before dinner, and he's taking her out to dinner tonight. So different, right. But in both cases, you're removing something from its usual place. Yeah, the trash is leaving the house, and the date is leaving their routine. And hopefully both are going somewhere enjoyable. Okay, last one for part two. Look up. The article gives us, you can look at the meaning of that word in the dictionary, and things are looking up for him since he got the new job. So we have the literal act of looking up something, and then a more figurative meaning of things improving. Right. Look up can be about seeking information, noticing positive change, or even just a feeling of optimism. It's like directing our attention upward, right. right? Whether we're looking for answers, hoping for a better future, or just admiring the view. Exactly. It's about expanding our perspective. All right, on to the final stretch. This last set of phrasal verbs feels a bit more, I don't know, formal. Like we've moved on from casual hangouts to more serious stuff. I see what you mean, like we're navigating the adult world now. Exactly. And first up, we have show up. The article gives us she didn't show up for the meeting yesterday. Pretty straightforward, right? But I think there's more to show up than just being physically present. It's about, like, making an effort. Right. Like, you can show up for a meeting, but you can also show up for a friend who needs support. Exactly. It's about being there for someone, being present. Okay, takeoff is back for round three. This time, it's all about making a quick exit. The article says, he took off right after the game ended. Yeah, no time to waste. This takeoff definitely has that sense of urgency, you know? It's like they vanished into thin air. Poof. Gone. All right, workout is next, and we got two meetings here. The article gives us, I like to work out at the gym three times a week, mm -hmm. and then we need to work out how to fix this issue before the deadline. So one is about physical exertion, and the other is about, like, problem solving, right? Yeah. 
but both involve putting in the effort to achieve something. Totally. It's about being dedicated and not giving up. Call off always makes me think of canceled plans. <laughs> you know, like they had to call off the concert due to bad weather. Yeah, it's definitely a bummer when that happens. But sometimes it's necessary, right? Absolutely. Sometimes things just don't go as planned. Okay, how about, hold on. It's, it seems so simple, like, hold on, I'll be right with you. Right, but I think hold on can also be about perseverance, like holding on to something you believe in or even just weathering a storm. It's about having that inner strength to keep going. Exactly. It's about resilience. Okay, come up with, always feel so creative. Like, she came up with a great plan for the school project. Yeah, it's about those aha moments. Right, when inspiration strikes and you have that brilliant idea. It's about being resourceful and finding solutions. Get along with seems yeah. pretty crucial for, you know, just getting through life. Mm -hmm. The article says, I get along well with my classmates. Yeah, it's about having positive relationships with the people around you. It's more than just tolerating each other, right? It's yeah. about actually connecting and finding common ground. Exactly. It's about building those bridges of understanding. Okay, break up. Definitely a phrasal verb with some emotional weight. The article gives the example, they decided to break up after dating for two years. Yeah, break up signifies an ending, which can be tough. It's about separating, going your separate ways. Sometimes it's necessary though, right? For growth and all that. Look out. <laughs> that one always gets my attention. Yeah. You're like, look out, there's a car coming. It's a warning, right, to be careful. Yeah, to pay attention and be aware of your surroundings. To stay safe. Okay, last one. Fill out. Usually makes me think of paperwork. Like, please fill out this application form. Yeah, forms, applications, all that fun stuff. But fill out can also have a more figurative meaning, right? Like filling out a role or filling your life with experiences. Right, it's about completing something, making it whole. Wow, we really covered a lot in this deep dive. Who knew phrasal verbs could be so fascinating? I know, right? They're like these little puzzles waiting to be solved. And once you understand them, it's like a whole new world of expression opens up. Exactly. It's like you've unlocked a secret code. So to all you listeners out there, keep an ear out for those phrasal verbs. You'll be surprised how much they add to your understanding of English. And, you know, don't be afraid to try using them yourself. Have fun with it. That's the most important thing. Absolutely. Until next time, keep exploring and keep those ears open for the fascinating world of language all around you.